So as I promised in a previous video, we're going to take a walk around in this and actually look, take a deep dive and look inside, what's going on inside the jet. So uh, let's go check this out. So here's the tail hook assembly. You certainly don't want to stand underneath this thing. It's a couple hundred pounds and if it decides to come loose and you're in the way, well, you're going to have a very bad day. But um, even though this is an Air Force bird, this uh, they all retain the Navy style hook. It, it worked well for the Air Force's needs also for the, uh, the uh, arresting cables at the end of the runway in case the brakes fail. But um, yeah, Navy style hook. Further back on the tail cone, this is where the drag chutes would come popping out the back. And there you go. All right, moving on. We got some of the pedal probes up top and some of the mechanisms inside. So give me a moment and I'll climb up there and we can take a peek inside the tail assembly. All right, so I made it up on one of these elevated mobile platforms. Now we can take a peek inside. So a lot of things going on in here. You can see there's a lot of cable operated controls coming to a lot of the hydraulic actuators and assemblies. See there's another hydraulic filter there. We pulled that a few weeks ago. And then it's more of the uh, rudder and tail activation assemblies. A lot of stuff going on back here. If you look right down there you see that bottle that's as part of the actuating assembly of the tail hook. Get some fuel lines ahead there, likely for the afterburner. So, a lot of fun stuff back here. All right, moving down ground side, here we are inside the right hand engine. You can see the afterburner rings and the back end of the uh, gas generator, also known as the power turbine. So, and then here's your afterburner liners. This one's in pretty good shape. And then also the nozzle. Duck around. Here's the left hand side. You can see some more of the same stuff. Afterburn rings and the power turbines. It's pretty big. You can actually crawl around inside there. All right, continuing on with the engines. We'll start up at the front here. You can see fuel control assembly, fuel controllers, some of the oil pumps. Weed air ducts, big giant fuel filter openings, and that's where an oil filter goes there. That big circular plate there, that's where the primary fuel filter goes. I know I'm probably screwing up some of this terminology, and I'm pretty sure some F4 maintainers are probably yelling at me right now on their computers. That's all right. We'll have a good time here, though. All right. So underneath this panel here, with this X, you can see this is where that Dash 60, the air start cart that I was working on last week, this is where it would plug in. And this assembly here is the air start motor that attaches through the accessory gearbox and gets the engine spinning up to speed so it can actually start. And then it, so that, so the air from the air cart comes in here does its thing inside here and then gets exhausted out right here at the bottom through this panel. All right. Now looking aft, we see some more bleed air ducting. This is where various things go around not only the engine, but uh, some of the bleed air actually makes it out to the wings because this is a hard wing D model. Some more fuel control, afterburner. You can see a lot of the afterburner uh, fuel piping and nozzles here. Pretty cool stuff. And there's uh, the afterburner section of the engine. And there it also is for the right hand engine. You gotta be careful crawling around here. I've caught my back a few times. Ah, here we go. This panel's open. So that's where, this is the right hand engine. And that's where your air start connection goes. Does this thing and the start air ends up exhausting out of this port right here. Gotta be careful, it's kind of hot coming come, uh, come screaming out of there. Alright, some more of the accessory case of the engine. Some hydraulic lines. 
right here. It's right here along center line. We see one of the hard points, and this is the fuel line connections for our drop tank. And you can see more of the connections. Alright. Another hydraulic filter there. We pulled that the other week. Alright. Main landing gear assembly. Some more connections. This is a hydraulic servicing port. This is where we would uh, connect the hydraulic mule to and take care of some hydraulic stuff. Uh, also fuel connections and the conversion table here for the ground mechanics. Uh, main landing gear connection. There's your brake assembly on the hub. And that is a landing gear lock. That's what keeps it uh, pinned down right now. We don't want it to uh, retract on the ground. And there, I believe, is your up locks. There's one of the missile rails here. You can attach a bomb here at the bottom, or another missile. Alright, moving aft underneath the wings. And we got some more hydraulic actuators and components for the ailerons. This rim right here is for the speed brake, which is this guy right here. We got it hanging down so we can do our inspections. So, there's that. Alright, moving forward, we'll continue moving forward and then go up. So, right here, right underneath where the pilot sits, hey, you got an air conditioner. It's uh, one of the two air conditioning environmental control systems for the aircraft right here. And the air intake for that is right there. Alright. Moving a little aft from the air conditioner, we have this. There's your engine inlets. I don't know if you can see, there's a uh, there's an air probe there. And right there at the nose section, that's one of your main generators of the engine. <laughs> My son usually is the lucky one that gets to crawl in those ducks for inspections like we did when we did the uh, the startup video. Um, doing that maintenance check. So he's the young one that gets uh, lucky to uh, crawl the ducks. And uh, you got your radome. This is where the IRST infrared search and track would go, the early version of it anyway. On the E model, this is where the gun would be. All right, air conditioning intake for the second package uh, here on the port side, or left-hand side, if you will. Here's underneath the pilot's console. You can see a bell crank assembly there for the throttles. Engine intake, splitter plates back there, and the uh, ramp, ramp doors for managing airflow for supersonic flight. We'll get up to the cockpit here momentarily. Alright, so now we're working our way up the bottom of the fuselage here. We're pretty much right underneath where the Wizzo would sit in here. So we got some more actuators and some more goodies back here. This is an air compressor, high pressure air compressor, runs on hydraulic, uh, comes off the uh, service hydraulics for the aircraft and it generates a lot of high pressure air for actuating various things on the aircraft. So, got some more goodies up in here. Air conditioning vent, I believe. Moving a little more forward. <laughs> Crew Chief Graffiti. 
There's where your nose gear. This is your nose gear bay here. There's your up lock. Nose gear is pinned. There's your oleo strut for the gear and the steering mechanism here. All right, now we are coming up the left hand uh, on the left wing. And some more filters and components down in here. Another bell crank assembly. This is on the upper surface of the left hand wing underneath the inspection panels. There you see some hydraulic actuators. Another hydraulic actuator for the That'd be the aileron, the trailing edge flaps would be back there. A lot of this piping right here is for fuel, uh, especially off that drop tank. You can see the connections right there. A lot of stuff goes in the drop tanks. They seem, uh, they seem very simple in DCS, but uh, pretty complicated when you get down to it. Here, I'm gonna climb up here. So actually, let me take a step back. So, you can see the tail end of the engines there and the engine intakes there. So down down and towards the bottom was where the engines were. Up here, this is where all your fuel tanks were. All your internal fuel anyway. So I'm going to take a quick climb up. All right. You can see an awful lot of the piping. This is for uh, fuel distribution, uh, filling the tanks, and also for mid-air refueling. But you can see a lot of the fuel tanks themselves are right underneath all this pipe work as you go back down the fuselage. Another one there, sensor. Now, let's see if I can find right there, right where this drill is. And if you watched my uh, special feature on the F4 and the last segment of it, I did an interview with Bluto, an actual F4 pilot. He mentioned that this is the refuel door and it actually pops up instead of retracting down like a lot of more modern fighters. So added an extra layer of uh, difficulty to refueling the F4. Mm. See the receptacle back inside there, and it, like I said, it just pops up out of there whenever it's time to refuel. All right. Communications and electronics bay just after the cockpits. So, I want to point out one thing right here on the leading into the wing. So this is a hard wing F4D, and what we had here, we did not have slats, unlike later models. This thing, this bird had a straight leading edge, didn't have any leading edge devices like slats. And what they did though, what they did find though, is if they sent some bleed air out of these ports, when the flaps were down, and that's the only time this happens, is when the trailing edge flaps are down, bleed air would come out of these ports on the wings and what that would help do is prevent airflow separation on the wing at high angles of attack it didn't work as good as slats but it was better than nothing and it helps prevent accelerated stalls and since the wing tip is up here's the there's the uh, the wing tip locks right there that we keep in Right here, these three little pipes, these are bleed air ducts for that system that I mentioned. This is where all the bleed air would come out for the uh, bleed air system on the wings. You can see some more here. This is where it would come flying out. Like I said, it just helps prevent flow separation and accelerated stalls at high angles of attack and only when the flaps are down. Alright, 
Moving up into the cockpit, here we are in the front seat. That's some modern stuff that we've that the Collings Foundation has put into this bird just to help him fly. But there's some of your primary engine instruments, communication, missile control. That was a pilot. This was a flight crew mod, so they can easily find this. They can easily find the missile switch. Landing gear. Indications. There's your throttles. Oxygen panel, anti-skid. There's a lot of cool stuff back here. Drag chute release. Whiskey compass, there's your hood. I don't know if this is functional or not in the jet. I haven't seen this. I haven't been in here as we've put power to the jet. All right, so let's go check out the uh, the Whistles cockpit. All right, I'll do my best as we have the seat out of the Whistles cockpit, so let's see what we can do in here. So this was an Air Force bird, so this was dual controlled, so the Wizzo actually has a set of throttles and a stick. But a lot of the stuff in the back here on this side, some of it's duplicates of the front seat, some of it's Wizzo specific. More breaker panels, emergency flaps, a lot of dual controls up front. There's your uh, one of your IFF control boxes. Upper instrument panel. There's the hand control unit for the radar, and unlike the F-14 Tomcat where it was center mounted in between the, the Rio's uh, knees essentially, you had your radar display here and your hand control unit for it here. Navigation and more circuit breaker panels and equipment. And that's the Wizzles cockpit. So here's a selection of some of the filters that we've pulled out of the F4. So you can see here's some of the canisters and you got some very fine mesh metal strainers. Some of these are cleanable, some of these cannot be and they have to be replaced. Here's another, this is a fuel strainer. All right. So, this is one of the main fuel filters, and for as thirsty as these J79s can be, you can see why these things are fairly large. I mean, look at that compared to my hand. And here's some of the oil filters and some of the auxiliary fuel filters. That is a very fine mesh strainer, and I believe this one has to be replaced, non-cleanable. And then here are some of the fuel filter canisters, and that's what they go in, and they go in that empty hole that I showed on my walk around. Well, there you have it, folks. There's the F4 in all her glory, and what's actually inside an F4 Phantom. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you next time, and thank you for watching.